everyone, and welcome back to the Steam Forward Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Savannah, and today our guest is Sue Bottomley. She's all the way from the UK, specifically the south coast of England. She used to be in the banking world, and now she has created this idea of the pause circle for you just to take a moment to pause in your life. So everybody, help me welcome Sue. Hello, Sue. Hello, Savannah. How you doing? I'm great, thank you. You're great. It's lovely to see you. How are you enjoying Miami? I'm enjoying it a lot, <laughs> possibly too much. Yeah, a lot of people say that when they come to Florida. It's too much fun. I feel like you play all day and there's no really like, mm. you know, working yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So how are you enjoying the beach and everything? Oh, no, the beach is great. And uh, is yeah, it? we spend a little bit of time there, not too much. Yeah. There's so much to do, so much to see around yeah. here. And such food. lovely people, so yeah. Lovely, lovely people. Yes. I think you're the only person yes. that was in Miami has lovely people. Especially at peacemakers. Oh, oh yes, of course me. here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so just give us a little background about yourself. Okay, so I was born in the north of England. Okay. And I was born um to two parents who didn't really get on very well. And yeah. I think I was born as a peacekeeper. Mm. And um basically failed miserably, I would say. Yeah. And I was also born with asthma. Really, mm. really bad asthma. So yeah. much of my first seven or eight years of life was spent in and in and out of hospitals, not very often at school. Wow. And uh and that had a big impact, actually, not realizing it at the time, but it did have a big impact on right. my life further on down the line. I never really felt that I belonged. I felt yeah. I was in the wrong family. If I went to school, I was in the wrong class because everybody was ahead of me or whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But it set up a chain of certain responses to things yeah. of how I ran my life. Kind of how you viewed how the world. How I viewed the world and yeah. things like that. So um, one day, and it was, uh, you know, we come on to how pause was queer. I think this was a really momentous, pivotal moment. Mm -hmm. This guy came in in a white jacket, a white yeah. suit, who I thought was a doctor. And he picked up a glass a bit like this. And he went, tell me about that glass. And I said, oh, it's just a glass of water. It's half full. Yeah. I thought he was going to say, you need to be drinking that. And anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he said, that glass is always full. Yeah. It's full of what you know, and it's full of what you don't know yet. Mm. Mm. I like that. Focus on what you don't know yet. Yeah. And this is when you were still banking? I was banking? about five. Oh, no, five. I was about five years oh, old. I was in the hospital bed and, you know. And I can remember going back to school and I thought, I yeah, I'm, I'm focusing on what I don't know yet. Wow, I love that. So and you were I'm, able just to kind of take that with yeah, you. Yeah, that was a real message, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, going forward, I, it really was one of the basis of my life in the bank. It's like, okay, I'm doing this now, but what do I want to do next? Do I'm yeah. doing this now? What's arriving around the corner? Mm -hmm. What's the possibility of this? And I got into banking purely to keep my get my father off my back. It was never a great desire. Because he was, was in banking as well? No. He had his own family business that did right. very, very well. And mm -hmm. I think he and I had quite a fractious relationship. Mm -hmm. I do not know what would have happened if I'd gone into the family business as the oldest right. person, uh, oldest daughter. Yeah. That was my role, really. And mm -hmm. I just rejected it. Yeah. So it was very fractious time. And I went into a bank just mm -hmm. to get him off my back. Not yeah. because I wanted had any interest whatsoever in banking. But and you just happened to be good at it. Well, I ended up being good at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I was never a huge... Well, I was passionate about the possibilities, I yeah. think. Um, and I did very well. I can't say that I had a bad life from yeah. it, but it got to a point after 15 years I'd had enough. I'd was had it enough stressful? Of the politics, the stress of it. Mm -hmm. I was quite a leading light for the... Um, female fraternity there yeah um who i think are still quite honestly underrepresented in many ways yeah and uh pioneered equal opportunities yeah which was just beginning to get started really mm -hmm. um nothing like what it is today yeah was, i feel like it's one of those businesses that never stops it never stops yeah um and there's i wouldn't like to say too bad much but it's a lot of arrogance in bank like right. they all know it all and yeah just, like, get to the point where it's like well do you yeah um and that was a point for me where it's like i'm going yeah stress i'm going now yeah and uh and i got out and that was back in 1990 and my father was a great entrepreneur mm -hmm. my mom was a really a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. uh, they were just like chalk and cheese yeah and 
my mum my mum would always say, You're just like your dad. You're just like your dad. And my mum would say, God, it's like your father. Yeah. You know, so I never really quite knew who I was in my, on one level. Right. I was trying to please this, trying to please that. Yeah. And it comes so, off yeah. almost as like distaste. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So it was um it was not in the easiest time. It was just like, okay, I am going south. Mm-hmm. I am creating my own business. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing was I didn't know what the business was going to be. All I knew is it wasn't going to be related to banking. Right. So how did you find out you wanted your business to be the pause circle? Well, pause sort of got developed off the back. Um, mm-hmm. I was, a whole series of events had happened, mm-hmm. um, which really resulted in me losing my fiance, losing my car, losing my job, losing the house. Yeah. Starting all over, yeah. In a smaller place where I wasn't particularly well known, I didn't want to be known either. So it was on my yeah. like hideout place, I think, mm-hmm. place to lick my wounds. And I got this opportunity. Oh, I, I belonged to this health club. That's probably how it happened. I belonged to this health club, and on the very last day where I couldn't afford to renew my membership, this I was looking like oh, dreadful, greasy <laughs> hair, full of disease. So, yeah. yeah. And this goddess-like woman started walking up the pool to the jacuzzi where I was sat, and it was like, she's going to get in. And, and she got in, and she started shutting away, and it turned out she was the HR director for American Express. Mm. And she was asking me what I wanted to do, and I said, well, I've got this idea I want to do, and she couldn't see me tomorrow. Mm. And she offered me a consultancy role. Wow. And then she wanted to roll out coaching across American Express Europe. Yeah. So I ended up back in the States, learned coaching the Amex way, so to say. Came back wow. to Europe, rolled it out. And that yeah. was my life for the next seven years. Wow. So um, I've been uh, privileged mm. to do the mm. pause circle. Mm. I've also been pri- privileged to be coached by you. Mm. Mm. Um, can you kind of explain, like, what is the purpose of the pause? Yes. Well, pause now, mm-hmm. I would say, is about self-awareness it's about self-care it's about creating choice yeah those are probably the three fundamentals yeah how we do that is using mindfulness Mm -hmm. um, techniques if you want to say that right really noticing what we notice Mm -hmm. and part of that comes from a lot of my background training i'm a a consistent learner i would say i'm always looking to learn things so we do some body what we call body work looking at how the body's holding cellular memory Right. Um, which could be traumatic. Yeah. And it could be fun and it could be all sorts. I'm also looking at the mood and emotion from where people are living. Yeah. And the language that they're using externally and internally. Yeah. Um, and when those are aligned, happiness and success happens. So the bottom line, I think, for pause is to find that inner peace, that inner happiness. Yeah. And whatever that person feels is their work to do in this lifetime. Right. So I guess my question would be, um, is what is the difference between coaching and therapy? Okay, so therapy is usually about fixing the past on some level or coming mm-hmm. to terms with the past. And I also trained as a therapist, mm-hmm. so um, in the person-centered disciplines. Mm-hmm. Coaching for me is really, there's an element of that, I think, to some extent now, right. anyway. But I think mostly it's about oh, where are we going with all this? Mm-hmm. What's the future? It's almost like drawing a line in the sand yeah. and saying, okay, and this is now. And what do you want to do next? What's the yeah. dream? What's the big yearning? Yeah. Or what's the unanswered question that, that keeps mm-hmm. nudging you to look at it? Yeah. And I think co- that's really where coaching is. Yeah, kind of thinking within. Keep thinking within and maybe accessing some, in my style of coaching, I think there's all sorts of coaching styles mm-hmm. around it. But in the poor style of coaching, it's about becoming present, mm-hmm. feeling what you're feeling, noticing what you're noticing, and yeah. allowing whatever wants to happen to happen, which yeah. is a bit like the, the glass half full. And why do you think that that's important, that every person sh- should pause? Well, I think the neuroscience will show that there's a lot of benefits from pausing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, down to little things, I was talking to my colleague this morning over breakfast, it's like the way we eat, yeah, the way we drink, mm-hmm. if we just gobble the food down or drink in the car on the way to a meeting or whatever, whatever, we don't really digest anything well. Yeah. If we pause, we can become more friendly with ourselves. Yeah. If we pause, we can notice what 
those little messages might be calling us to do or be or have, or yeah. ask for whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So besides pause, are you working mm -hmm. towards anything else in the future? To, at the moment, uh, the pause circles are held fortnightly mm -hmm. for as, as an open group. Yeah. We've got a, uh, deep, a program called Deep. Mm-hmm where they really, people really go deeper into themselves. Yeah. And we have a program uh, called Making Friends With. And that fundamentally is about making friends with yourself. Mm, I love that. Because it's almost like if you have that resistance or an anger or an irritation mm -hmm. or something, it's in the way of a flow. Yeah. So flow is a really important thing for me because yeah. it links to manifesting, it links to allowing, it links to being courageous to step into whatever it is somebody wants. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm. Sue, we like to do the word of the mm. day. And um, mm. as as I always, like, kind of set up the question, if you could mm. sum up the pause circle, your life experiences, kind of your trials and your tribulations, and mm. where you are now in life, what would be that one word? The one word would be thank you. Yeah. Because... Um, I haven't always been grateful or thankful to my past. Yeah. There's some means a lot of work to make peace with it, all yeah. the people in it or events or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm grateful to a huge amount of teachers that I've had yeah. of different of different people, but yeah. so impactful. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I can say yeah. that you and Moj, they have really impacted my life mm. in such a positive way. So if I could just testify to the work that Thank you're you. doing, it is positive and it is making a change, not mm. just with me, but even the or organization I work for. Yes. So thank you guys so much for the work you do. Thank it's you. It's really needed. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for Pleasure. joining us all the way from the UK. Exciting and fun stuff. And as always, there's two sponsors that we like to thank, and that's the Children's Trust and Trinity Church. And don't forget that there's three ways in which you can watch or listen to this podcast. If you'd like to watch, just follow us on YouTube. If you'd like to listen, you can follow us on Apple or Spotify. Remember, this is the Steam Forward Podcast. See you next week. Steam Forward Podcast.